So our guest today is Sally Gunnell, OBE, who during a golden 24-month period between 1992 and 94 won every international event open to her, claiming Olympic Games, World Championship, European Championship, Commonwealth Games, Goodwill Games, IAAF World Cup and European Cup goals in the 400-metre hurdles event and breaking the British, European and world records. What a legend. She remains the only female British athlete ever to hold four major track titles concurrently. But since retiring from international athletics, Sally has developed a new career path as a keynote speaker and well-being advocate. She's married to athlete John Biggs and has three boys. Um, She's authored four books and with John she's created Optimise Your Age, which brings all the ways that they've tried, investigated and embraced to look after themselves and they want to share these with everyone. And today she's going to share them with us. Welcome, Hello. Sally. Hello. Hi. Gosh, you've got a whole list of <laughs> medals going on you're reminding me about there. Oh, well, <laughs> I remember you so much oh. from, well, from 92. 92. We're that was going the year away, I got, don't we? Yeah. That was the yeah. year I got married, actually. So I remember all those games and yeah, oh. it was amazing what you achieved. It really is. Thank you. It feels like yesterday, not what, 30 years ago. It's mad, <laughs> isn't it? Crazy. 30 years ago. <laughs> my goodness. So tell us a bit more about Optimise Your Age. What's that all about? Yes. I mean, it's been a, it's been an interesting little journey. And I guess, you know, well-being and health has always been part of my life. And it was always, you know, when I was running, it was always about those little tiny things that you added in around, you know, I don't know, recovery or uh, what you were eating straight after you trained and all those things that actually made the difference at the end of the day. And and I think as I was sort of, you know, starting to age, you realise just how your body's changing and all the things that I used to be able to do. um, You know, it wasn't that I couldn't do them. I just had to adapt and Mm. just... You know, and I think my body has always been, it fascinated me and just generally, you know, just amazing what it can do, um, but also amazing how we need to protect it and how we have to move with it almost, you know, mentally and physically. Um, And it's just really about, optimise your age is just really about, you know, how can we still be active and healthy and and a lot of what I look about is preventative sort of stuff which is really really important and that's where I want to go with it. I'd like to ask the question because you know you say preventative but you know you you are obviously very fit and always been very fit someone like myself who perhaps has come to exercise a bit later um, than I should have and I'm you know I'm trying to really get myself fit now my joints have really played up um, recently so it's stopping me um, doing exercise so when you say preventative you know for people who aren't like mm. me and left it too late what what would you suggest I think it's never too late so <laughs> you know I think um you know it's about finding something that you enjoy when it comes to exercise and activity and putting that into your life and and that can be at you know any level so it doesn't really matter what it looks like and I'm sure we'll go into to that later on um when it comes to, to joint pain you know <laughs> I have days with, you know, I'm still aching and and whatever else. But I also take on board, you know, often it's because I've not drunk enough water that my joints are a little bit achy. And that's the sort of preventative bit that I sort of do and think, well, you know, maybe I should adapt it today and just go swimming or go for a walk or take a day off or, you know, eat. You know, maybe I need to have some more olive oil or, you know, just adapting how how you're sort of feeling and I think the preventative for me is like well you know I I want to be as as active as I can I don't want to have you know too many aches and pains and I know it's important that we keep our muscles strong this is the biggest thing that I've learned as we age is just how our muscle strength just goes you know it's just scary you know my muscles are just falling off almost so that's sort of like a real area that I've sort of, you know, made sure that I've, I've done more of is to make sure that my muscles are strong. So that's a preventative piece, which, you know, if we've got nice, strong muscles, we can get up and down out of a chair. We can still get up off the floor. Um, you know, we, I know that if I've got strong thighs, that my knees don't hurt so much or, you know, I'm able to support my sort of my hips and things like that. And how important to keep the muscles in the core for my back and and those sort of things, the preventative stuff. So um, the aches and pains, 
yes, you are going to have a certain amount of it, but often it is linked to not eating the right food or, um, you know, recovery or, as I sort of said, you know, hydration and things like that at the same time. So I think it's always good to do that and to keep those muscles strong to, to support all those ligaments and joints, which is, you know, where that sort of, you know, as we age, that's what sort of is. We're going to have part of that, aren't we? That's just nature. That's natural that our bodies are going to have, you know, just types of, you know, arthritic joints in a certain sort of way. I mean, I suppose if they scanned us all, we'd all be all sorts of different things. So it's trying to keep all those ligaments and joints and help support it. And movement is so important as well. And of course, you know, with perimenopause and menopause, that yes. can affect the way that your joints ache. Um, we spoke to Anthea Turner some time ago now, and she mentioned to us about a DEXA scan, which is more for bone density. But we definitely sort of advocate that if you've got mm. osteoporosis in the family or you feel like you need a benchmark, um, sometimes it's available on the NHS, sometimes you've got to go private. But osteoporosis really is a worry for a lot of women as they age. Would you recommend taking a test before you start exercising to make sure that you can keep your bones healthy and you can see the difference that you're making through exercise? Yeah, I mean, I think, again, it's a natural thing. I think, you know, I, I took my 92-year-old mother to have, because she had got knee problems, and she had uh, an injection in her knee. I think it was a cortisone injection in her knee. And the arthritic specialist said, you know, as soon as we get to, I don't know, in our 60s and 70s, we should be on vitamin D and calcium tablets. Whoever you are, you know, your bone density is going to be, you know, it, it, it's going to be a problem. So, um, you know, I think that's one thing we need to have a look at and, and, and take on board. Um, for me, I know that you know, bone health, uh, and I do I do a lot of work around bone health because it is massive. Um, and I get lots of people, you know, writing and asking questions all about it. Um, the, the best way is to keep our bones strong is to do exercise, which, you know, you're, you're pounding almost. I know it sounds awful, but it's like, so something like weights is good. So you're using your body weights, but you're pushing through. So um, something like, you know, you know, walking or running or, um, you know, going up hills and things like that, going across trainers, bikes, things like that. Anything that we're actually moving our body is going to help strengthen our bones. So I think in our way, in our mind, we have to think like that. Um, there are other tests out there, and I've done some work with a company called Osteolab, actually, who do a pre-test before you go and have a DEXA scan to see if, um, you know, what your bone health is like. And that's a simple little thing that you can do at, at home. So you don't have to go to your doctors to get, you know, to go and get a DEXA scan or anything like that. It's sort of a pre-sort of test to see whether you could have it at some point and whether you've started that. So I think that's a great way if people are worried about it um, but yeah it is very very common and I think it's something that we need to take seriously um, because as we age you know our bodies are going to get weak and if we start falling over and we have we're not exercising um, that's when we're going to have big issues of you know oh. fracturing bones and hips and things like that so this is where we're looking at that preventative sort of thing so you know I think now as, as we're all in our menopause at this sort of age in our 50s and often in, in late 40s now isn't it I think it's it, it's thinking of that sort of way and, and I think again you know getting it doesn't have to be heavy weights but just getting you know even your own body weight and doing some squats and uh, press ups against the wall or something like that is all great ways to prevent you know bone issues as we age and of course it's not for everybody but HRT um, yes. has been proven to to help guard against osteoporosis um yeah are you an advocate of hrt or? do you know i i am i wasn't i was oh. i've always been a very very natural person i've always you know i suppose it's my sport tried to do everything through eating and and other ways and all of those sorts of things but I think it's been amazing the knowledge that we now have around the menopause. And, you know, I, I came from a 
you know, background where you didn't really talk about things like that. You didn't talk about periods, you didn't talk about menopause, all of those sorts of things. And I think it's just brilliant how we're now, we've got so much knowledge um, around it. And now when I look back, um, you know, probably the last sort of six years and, and actually realise that, you know, I had some sort of eye issue and I now realise, well, that's probably lit stop now because I'm coming out of my menopause. It's sort of like, well, that was probably linked to that. And there's so many little yeah. things around sleeping, around, you know, hot sweats when I was off working, anxiety, all of those sorts of things. And I'm very much, you know, I'm not a person to put up with them. Um, I always <laughs> think there's got to be a way. And, and um, you know, I don't want to be like this. And it's affecting who I am as an individual. And, and that's when I turned to HRT. And it has been amazing. And, um yeah, I'm sleeping so much better. Um, and the well, hot sweats and just, I just, yeah, much more confident. And when you, you know, when you're having to stand on stage and talk to people, you know, the anxiety that I was starting to feel um, was an awful sort of feeling. But now, you know, the enjoyment of it all has come back. And I think, you know, I am a big advocate, but it isn't for everybody. And I, you know, and I think it has to be a real personal journey everything like this to do with your own well-being has to be a holistic look at it and, and it has to be your own journey that you believe in and i pick up on sleeping um you mentioned <laughs> it a couple of times there yeah. it's such a problem for midlife women yeah. i don't think i know of anybody who can put their hand up and say i get great quality sleep all of the time and i feel great it affects everything it affects your relationships it affects your your mood it affects your health um i know that you've done a lot on sleep and i'd love to know your tips on how we can try to get a good night's <laughs> sleep whether that's taking supplements or you know putting the phone down two hours before you go to bed what what are your yeah. top tips there it is and it is it's so so important you know and I always say you know I'm probably the grumpiest mum out when I haven't had enough sleep and um you know again going back to my you know running days it was when your body recovers you know it's when your brain does its thinking time um so I knew then that the importance of sleep was, was so critical um, and it's hard as you get into, you know, as you age and all of a sudden, you know, you're not having your eight, ten hours sleep and you're like, hang on a minute. Um, and, you know, realising a lot of that was because of, yes, the hormones, um, but also I think it is. It's about creating a good sleeping environment, I always say. You know, it has to be looked at lots of little things again. Um, so I, I do, personally, there's little things. I try and eat a bit earlier in the evening. I know if I've eaten 8.30, 9 o'clock, can't always be helped. Um, but I know eating a little bit earlier, that's something that I've tried to do. One, it helps my sleep. Two, I then stop eating and I sort of try not to snack all night then and I think that's good for keeping you know weight down and things like that um so I think that's a really good thing because then your body's you know done all the digesting and it's starting to slow down um and your heart rate sort of comes down off, off the as well if it's not having to keep digesting everything in the body um I do have to get away from the phone you know, it's so easy to sit there, isn't it? And watch television and, you know, go on social media. And it's very active in the evening. So I have to be very strict about it. Um, other things I do is I'll ha always have a bath before I go to yeah. bed, create a nice, relaxed atmosphere. Um, I do watch telly sometimes. My husband's a big telly watcher in bed. But often I would read a book because I know that within about 15 minutes I've sort of gone. But... Do you know what? I do have good nights and bad nights. Um, I'm getting more good nights than I used to. But every now and again, you know, you get that busy brain. Something's gone on or, you know, you're having to deal with something in your mind. And that does make it hard. And I just try not to get stressed about it. Mm -hmm. um, I often would wake myself up. I often put a little pad next to my bed, write something down that I'm thinking. So I've dumped it over there. I find that helps because I sort of think, God, I've got to try and remember that in the morning or whatever. So I find that helps. Um, often would get up, go for a little walk and then come back 
down and go to bed. Do you know the other thing I do is I often put headphones in and I will listen to a podcast, you know, or a book or something. And it just, I don't know, it just takes my mind off and I just sort of fade away. And I quite like that. So that's sort of something else that I've tried doing. Um, but how about just um, go on. Sorry, I was going to say, how about supplements? I've tried magnesium and CBD. Have you tried anything, Liz? No. <laughs> Do you know there's um, magnesium in your bath and so I put in my bath I often put magnesium flakes like salt flakes oh Epsom salts your, yeah well it's oh, Epsom salts those, yeah, yeah. Um, there's, there's some sort of some sort of specialist ones as well I often do that that's quite a nice way and, and it is often linked to you know magnesium and things like that so yeah that's another thing to try so I think it's about trying everything uh, but but making sure that you do yeah, we respect our sleep and we realise how important it is. Um, and, you know, just finding ways and trying to create that sort of good sleeping environment and getting into that bit of a routine. And I, and I know often, you know, if I've, I don't know, weekends and I've had too much wine, you know, that totally, I go off to sleep, lovely, but then I wake up at two o'clock. Yeah, you get um, that sugar spike, don't exactly. you, around about two or three o'clock. Yeah. So I, it's often linked, isn't it, to things mm. that we've either eaten again or we've drunk or things like that. And, and that's fine, isn't it? You know, I'm, I'm not, you know, saying that we've all got to give up all these nice things in life. But it's sometimes going, oh, well, I know why. And, you know, that's fine. It's the weekend or whatever else. And I'll get back on it, you know, mm. Sunday, Monday. So it's fine. So. And I think sometimes if you try and fight it during the night, mm. as you say, if you can't do a brain dump and get get it written down yeah. on a post-it note or, so, or something. But if you fight it, it just gets worse. And yes. Actually, in the summer, it's not so bad. You can get up, and I don't mind getting up at 4.35 in the morning and yeah, yeah. Sit, sitting and just watching the sunrise. I, I kind yeah. of actually love that. Yeah, but <laughs> I like that. if you're not getting sleep, you also need to find time to rest, don't you? Yeah. Um, one of the things that I've really adopted since I went on a little city break to Stockholm is fika. Um, I don't know if you've come across it, but Swedes, multiple times in the day, at least once in a day, they'll sit down with a cup of coffee and a friend and they won't be multitasking. I think yeah. we're all guilty of that, aren't we? Doing the multitask, yeah. being on the oh. laptop, having a cup of tea, you know, maybe watching TV yeah. and, I don't know, cook, too doing busy. all these things. We're too busy in our lives. We are too exactly. busy. Exactly. And do you know what? It's a little power nap. You know, I think oh, yeah. it's good to teach yourself that. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, isn't it? If you're on a train, you know, often I'll have a little snooze because you, you can or whatever. If someone's driving me, I'll have a snooze in the back of the car. You know, that's, again, that was something that we had to do with running is, you know, we used to have a two-hour sleep in the afternoon when we were training, um, So you, you know, for recovery So because it was so important. So, you know, teach yourself to have little power naps. You know, there's ask, nothing wrong with that. How do you teach yourself? Because my daughter is brilliant. At, she's not 25 now, but, you know, she's brilliant at power napping. I just can't do it. I just lie there and my brain is going <laughs> round and round. Well, can... I think sometimes you don't have to always go to sleep, but it is about, you know, going to sit down and read a book mm. or, I don't know, put, a you know, some sort of silly television programme on in the afternoon, isn't it? Sometimes it's just stopping and and if you just allow yourself to do that if you've got the time and you can I mean my biggest thing is I don't allow myself to do that and I don't know about you but um you know I'm always charging around and my husband's he's brilliant at it he'll go and have a little you know doze or whatever watching the Formula One on a Sunday afternoon you know what I mean before we know it and he's just and I'm always on the go there's always something but I've had to train myself to try it and do it and, and to just to stop. And I don't know what it is. Maybe it's us as women. I don't know. There's always something to do in the house, isn't there? There's always washing to put on or something or other. And and I'm, I'm having to be really strict with myself and say, right, my jobs are done. Um, and just allow yourself that time mm. and the space. But I do have to force myself. I'm not good yeah. at it. But we do perform better when we, when, when we are more rested. I find that literally changing the pattern of my breathing i can usually get to sleep for a power nap within about 40 seconds can you yeah oh, yeah I I, it's my superpower you. never seen your power never seen you stop <laughs> <laughs> no i do that's the thing because i'm always on the go and i'm sort of multitasking and racing the clock all the time i do allow myself a power mm. nap and i love it yeah. and it 
you know, my husband works late, we get up early, there's not a lot of time in between. So if I didn't take a 20 yeah. minute nap in the afternoon, quite often, I, I honestly don't think I'd be able to function. No. And you know, the, the power of breath work, um, you know, it is, it's a, it's a great way. I mean, that's, that's, you know, so I've forgotten about that almost a great way of, you know, just listening to your breath and just slowing it down to get you in, in that sort of, you know, self state and also to deal with sort of stress. I mean, it's, it, I now realize, and I never, but that's what I used to do on the start line or in the call room. And, and I did it just naturally and I've oh. just sort of looked into it as I've got older and just the understanding of what it actually does to calm you and and to get you in a good positive state and nobody knows you're doing it and it can be done in five minutes you know and it's not massive sort of technique isn't it but it is it's a great way of just I don't know if you're in the office all day <laughs> Uh, you know just take five minutes to do a bit of breath work it's incredible and, and you know it doesn't have to be much it's just sort of slow breathing in isn't it through the nose and then out through your mouth hold for a couple of seconds and then just slowly breathing out but you can just feel the oxygen almost getting into the brain and then just slowing it down so yeah that's all I do I often do that before I go out on on stage as well I just calm yeah. everything down so. And it becomes a bit of a muscle memory as well. It's a trigger yeah. to your brain. Like, okay, I'm going to breathe in such a way. This is your, this is your trigger to know this is slow down everything. It, it, it's I'm really powerful. Yeah. Why didn't you tell me about this? <laughs> <laughs> it's my little secret. It is my it's secret you can weapon. Do so much. I, I never even thought about doing that. You know, okay. you hear about meditation, all that, but I, but not just. Well, I yeah. can't do yoga. I'm no, hopeless at yoga because yeah. my brain is too busy. It won't yeah. let me relax. Mm. But this, this breathing thing gosh if you can do it anyone can do it I <laughs> and I find meditation really hard you know yeah. it doesn't come easy and I, I you know I need to stick it a bit more but I find that hard but breath work is just so much easier so yeah, yeah. Me meditation for me is just um a time yeah. when I can write a list in my head yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's so. me that's exactly it gotta I'm be gonna try this to it, though I'm, yeah we're not I'm, there yet no <laughs> no I'm gonna try that then the, the, the breathing because I really I, I've tried meditate, it doesn't work, but five minutes, I think I can do. I, think you I can do find five minutes. minutes in my day. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you've got some brilliant ideas there. Where do you see your website and your platform going? Um, you know, in, in midlife, it's so fantastic that you can change what you're doing. You've been an Olympic athlete. Now you're sort of a, a well-being advocate. Where do you want to take it to? Um, who knows? I mean, I think for me, it's, I, I always looked at different stages of my whole career and I feel like I'm just starting, you know, a whole new sort of stage of my life really. And, and I think that is all around, you know, we are all going to live longer because of, you know, medicine and, and just the science that we all know. Um, and I think there is this whole piece about, you know, what can we be doing in our 50s, 60s, 70s, 90s, you know, to to keep ourselves as fit and active and how does the body change, speaking to the specialist, you know, just, you know, when I when I ran, I, I got the best people in to help me, you know, I, I, I don't know anything, um, but I knew I needed help and support and I think it's the same way now, it's about asking the specialist, getting that advice and being able to be a, a voice in, in so many ways to be able to pass it on, trial it ourselves, you know, John's finding it himself, my husband coming in from a, you know, a male side of things, you know, he's finding it just as challenging because, you know, he comes from the mindset, and we've got three boys where it's always, you know, got to keep up, you know, with them and I've got to do this and and he's not able to. So he's, a, a, you know, he's really adjusting. And we've had a, a couple of friends that have had, you know, been in their 50s and 60s with heart issues. And um, it's quite scary. So, um, you know, we're adapting things that way as well and what we can bring in. So passing that sort of knowledge on. So um, and I think lots of people now are much more interested in, um, you know, they know they've got to look after themselves. And, um, you know, they're, they're now getting that knowledge that, you know, so much of our health issues are because of our lifestyles. And, you know, and, and they want to 
be as active and as healthy as they can and, and, and just taking that knowledge on and just making those sorts of changes really. And I, and I always say to people, they don't have to be massive changes in their lives, you know, just little tiny things can, can go such a big way. And I think that's, that's the way to look at it and make it achievable. Prevention is better than cure, isn't it? Yeah, so exactly. Sa- so, Sally, where can people find your website and find you on social media to follow your great tips and advice? Uh, well, just get on to sallygarnell.com or on Instagram, Facebook. We're there or optimise your age. Have a look at that. And, um, yeah, just have a look at all the latest info. And um, we just just about sharing it and and we're always asking for people for advice little tips like you've given today all help to for us all to be able to make that decision brilliant thank you so much sally gunnell wonderful thank you